Hi guys. I welcome you all to this journey. The disease we'll be discussing today is mucous membrane pemphigoid. Pemphigoid diseases are chronic autoimmune subepithelial blistering diseases with female predilection of 2 is to 1. Characterized by tense blisters and erosions on mucous membranes and rarely on skin, predominantly involves the oral and ocular mucous membranes. Also called as cicatricial pemphigoid, healing with scar formation is called cicatrix, associated with the lesions of eye. No scarring is associated with oral lesions. Let's take a clinical outlook. Diffuse erythema of buccal gingiva can be seen. Ulcerations and erythema of the right buccal mucosa. Simliferon is scarring resulting in adhesion of palpebral and bulbar conjunctiva. Entropion is the inward turning of the eyelid resulting in trichiasis which is inward growth of eyelashes which causes corneal damage. Let's see a few of the clinical signs associated with this disease. What we'll see are intraoral ulcerations, ulcers and erosions extending to unattached gingiva and may also involve marginal and attached gingiva. Most commonly affected sites include gingiva, buccal mucosa, palate, alveolar ridge, tongue and the lower lip. What we'll see next is intraoral blisters in the form of tense bullas that are short-lived and may be seen at various sites. Plaque accumulation. Accumulation of plaque due to poor oral hygiene maintenance which may superimpose an additional inflammatory response. Want to know what's going wrong? Let's get familiar with the normal basal cell attachment at basement membrane zone. The little red and blue lines we see are the hemidesmosomal attachments that bind basal cells to the connective tissue. Let's get a closer look to see what's happening. This is your basal cell, lamina lucida, lamina densa and the connective tissue. The red line represents BP180 and blue represents laminin 5 or epilegrin. Let's see what causes mucous membrane pemphigoid. Individual's own immune system starts reacting against its own tissues. Targets structural proteins of hemidesmosomes at the basement membrane zone. Autoantibodies target BP180 and epilegrin laminin 5 which are components of hemidesmosome resulting in subepithelial split, blister formation and detachment of basement membrane with epithelium from underlying connective tissue. To clear up some concerns, definitive diagnostic tests are performed including perilegional biopsy for light microscopy and perilegional biopsy for direct immunofluorescence. Let's see with the help of a model how this is done. As the model clearly shows, there is a vesicle and an erosion. If a biopsy is intended, then at least 2 to 3 mm of space is kept between the lien and the biopsy site. The sample is taken and placed in a specific container. Similarly, on the other side, same 2 to 3 mm of distance is kept between the lien and the sample site. Biopsy is taken and the sample is placed in a specific container. Let's see the results of light microscopy. In both these slides, we see subepithelial clefting with no acantholysis. The subepithelial clefting, there is a clean separation of the superficial stratified squamous epithelium from the underlying connective tissue at the layer of the basement membrane zone. Here we see a dense lymphocytic infiltrate along with other inflammatory cells in the connective tissue. Direct immunofluorescence. For a patient with mucous membrane pemphigoid, this will be seen. This is a continuous linear band mainly of IgG, C3 and to a lesser extent IgA at basement membrane zone. Let's take a look at our model. This is your basement membrane zone. 
This is your keratinocyte of the basal cell layer. The hemidesmosome BP180 and laminin 5. Now each basal cell is attached to the basement membrane with a hemidesmosome. The affected individual has autoantibodies attached to the BP180 and laminin 5 component of hemidesmosomes. The affected individuals sample when flushed with fluorescein labeled anti-human IgG forms a complex which appears as a continuous linear band at basement membrane zone which is viewed by this green line. Treatment Primary aim of treatment is to prevent any ocular complications, prevent new blister formation, prevent any sort of secondary infection and to promote healing of previously present ulcers and vesicles. Let's talk about a few of the treatment options. Topical therapy. Application of some potent steroid on lien several times a day or in case of only gingival liens, flexible mouth guard is fabricated that acts as a carrier for the topical medication. Systemic therapy. For mild to moderate cases, use of systemic corticosteroids along with dapsone. For less severely affected individuals, use of tetracycline, minocycline, and niacinamide daily divided dose of 0.5 to 2 grams of each drug is used. More severely affected individuals, use of systemic corticosteroids along with immunosuppressive agents like mycophenolate and cyclophosphamide is being used. Severe unresponsive cases IV human immunoglobulin pulsed IV cyclophosphamide and rituximab which is an anti-CD20 monoclonal antibody are being used. Appropriate wound care, good oral hygiene maintenance, referral to an ophthalmologist for ocular examinations even if the patient is not having any ocular symptoms to prevent complications timely and a follow-up schedule must be strictly followed. Ending with a hope that it helped you in one way or another.